The Rooster and the Fox. It was a bright evening, and the sun was sinking on a glorious world. A wise old rooster flew into a tree to roost. He flapped his wings three times and crowed loudly. The powerful crow of the rooster was heard across the forest, and it also got the attention of a hungry fox who was searching for food. The fox came near the tree where the rooster was standing, and he thought of a plan to bring the rooster down. Just as the rooster was about to sleep, he saw the red fox standing down. "Have you heard of the wonderful news?" cried the fox in a very joyous and excited manner. "What news?" asked the rooster calmly. The rooster was afraid of the fox, and he knew that the fox was here with some wicked plans. Your family and mine, and all other animals, have agreed to forget their differences and live in peace and friendship from now on forever. Just think of it. I simply cannot wait to embrace you. Do come down, dear friend, and let us celebrate this moment," said the fox. "How grand!" said the cock. I am certainly delighted by the news, but he spoke in an absent way and, stretching upon tiptoes, seemed to be looking at something afar off. What is it you see? asked the fox anxiously. Why, it looks to me like a couple of dogs are headed this way. They must have heard the good news, and but the fox did not wait to hear more. He started to run away. Wait! cried the cock. Why are you running? The dogs are your friends now. Of course, yes," answered the fox. "But they might not have heard the news. Besides, I had a very important errand that I had almost forgotten about." The cock smiled as he buried his head in his feathers and went to sleep. He had succeeded in outwitting an enemy that day. The rooster knew that a trickster can be easily tricked. The frog and the ox. One day, a little frog came hopping up to a big frog who was sitting by the pond. The little frog looked really excited. "What happened?" asked the big frog. "Oh, father, I have seen the biggest frog in the world," said the little frog. It was as big as a mountain. It had horns on its head, a long tail, and its nose was divided into two. Ha! said the big frog. Tush, child, tush. You must have seen the farmer's ox. But the big frog wasn't willing to accept that the ox was greater than him. So he said, "But I don't think it's bigger than me. He may be a little taller than me, but you see, I can easily make myself as big as he is." Huh? Can you show me? Asked the little frog. Hmm. Said the big frog. Was he as big as this? As he puffed himself up. Oh, much bigger than that! Said the little frog. Then the big frog puffed himself up again and asked, Was he this big? Much, much bigger than you. Again, the big frog blew himself out and asked the young one if the ox was as big as that. Bigger, father, bigger," was the reply. "Ridiculous," said the big frog, who thought he was much more important than he actually was. "Wait, and I'll show you. I'm the oldest frog in this pond, and the biggest too." So the big frog took a deep breath, and blew and blew and blew, and swelled and swelled and swelled. "Stop it, father!" Said the little frog, "I think you're going to hurt yourself." But pride overtook the big frog, and he kept blowing himself out. He puffed and puffed himself so much, and he finally burst. Boom! The big frog had lost his life just because he wasn't ready to let go of his pride.
The Goose and the Golden Egg. There once was a countryman who possessed the most wonderful goose you can imagine. Every day when he visited the nest, the goose had laid a beautiful, glittering golden egg. The countryman took the eggs to market and soon began to get rich. But it was not long before he grew impatient with the goose because she gave him only a single golden egg each day. He was not getting rich fast enough. Then one day, after he had finished counting his money, the idea came to him that he could get all the golden eggs at once by killing the goose and cutting it open. But when he killed the goose, not a single golden egg did he find, and his precious goose was dead. Those who have plenty want more and more, and they end up losing everything they have. The Miller, His Son, and the Ass one day, a long time ago, an old miller and his son were on their way to market with an ass which they hoped to sell. They drove him very slowly, for they thought they would have a better chance to sell him if they kept him in good condition. As they walked along the highway, some travelers laughed loudly at them. What foolishness, cried one, to walk when they might as well ride the donkey. The miller did not like to be laughed at, so he told his son to climb up and ride. They had gone a little farther along the road when three merchants passed by. Oh ho, what have we here? They said to the boy. Respect old age, young man. Get down and let the old man ride. Though the miller was not tired, he made the boy get down and climbed up himself to ride, just to please the merchants. At the next turnstile, they overtook some women carrying market baskets loaded with vegetables and other things to sell. Look at the old fool, exclaimed one of them, perched on the ass while that poor boy has to walk. The miller felt a bit vexed, but to be agreeable, he told the boy to climb up behind him. They had no sooner started out again than a loud shout went up from another company of people on the road. What a crime, cried one, to load up a poor dumb beast like that. They look more able to carry the poor creature than he to carry them. They must be on their way to sell the poor thing's hide, said another. The miller and his son quickly scrambled down, and a short time later, the marketplace was thrown into an uproar as the two came along, carrying the donkey slung from a pole. A great crowd of people ran out to get a closer look at the strange sight. The ass did not dislike being carried, but so many people came up to point at him and laugh and shout that he began to kick and bray. And then, just as they were crossing a bridge, the ropes that held him gave way and down he tumbled into the river. The poor miller now set out sadly for home. By trying to please everybody, he had pleased nobody and lost his ass besides. Hi friends! 
Did you have a lot of fun with the videos? Do you want more? Subscribe to our channel to have more fun with me. Click here to continue watching more such beautiful sing-song rhymes.